Hello my dear YouTuber friends and I hope you're all keeping well. Welcome to this new video. Now, frame gen, DLSS, FSR, you've probably all heard of them, whether you're on PC or Xbox. They are sort of hidden tools or extra tools that you can use to help improve your graphics and performance in games and in Flight Sim 2020 and Flight Sim 2024. What are they exactly? I'm going to try and explain that in this video and perhaps also try and discover whether or not you should be using them if they are available to you. What benefit will they give you on PC in Flight Sim 2024? So let's not dilly dally Let's get on with this video. Well then, I'm currently flying around New York, of course, you've heard me say it before, one of the most dense areas in Flight Sim 2024, and it's a good testing bed. You can see I've got developer mode on in the top left there. What am I getting? Around 40 frames. I'm also using Tolby Eye Tracker to look around, and I'm using my force feedback flight stick, which is fantastic in the Spitfire. Uh, yeah, and it's just, and the aeroplane heaven spitfire. Well, as you can see, without frame gen, without DLSS, in 1440p, at ultra high settings, so many in high, but some are ultra at well, as well, rather. What am I hitting? 40 to 50 frames, which is not too bad. And uh, looking around. Yeah, generally, just looking around. It's all quite smooth. I can get quite a smooth experience from that. Uh, but there's time, especially in airliners, that this may, the frames may go down to some like 30, 32 without recording. Uh, maybe even sub 30 in busy airports. And that's where Freygen, and even DLSS at times, can make a difference. Let's go over frame gen first and DLSS. So I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll just find the escape key, <laughs> go to settings, let's just show you the settings I'm running at, so 1440p, anti-aliasing, so that's not DLSS, that's, I'll come to that later, I've got that in TAA, frame generation off, I've just set a, set a max frame rate for 60 there, I've just been playing around with settings and generally... I've got my settings almost where I want them. Buildings have actually turned up to ultra. Interestingly, I'm running the t uh, 16, sorry, the 5060 Ti 16 gigabyte. At these settings, 1440p, I rarely see my graphics memory go above 10 gigabytes usage, which is exactly why I put buildings on ultra. I'd probably turn a few more settings up, but then I'm trying more to opt for smoothness rather than massive eye candy. I want it to look good, but I'd rather have smoothness and it looking... Okay. Well, looking great rather than looking absolutely amazing with everything on Ultra. I don't need that. I can get away with everything on Ultra with this graphics cards. I will do a video, a couple of weeks video later, shall we say, of this graphics card. Because I'm having a whale of a time with it. Ray Trace Shadows, I've got that turned on. And as you can see, my, most of us, many on high. I've turned air track aircraft traffic variety and quantity low just so i don't you know i don't want to see that <laughs> at airports uh motion blur motion blur get the words out is off of course so there you go those are my settings what i'm going to do now though, keep an eye on the fps there i'm going to turn frame gen on and i found a frame multiplier because i can go to three times and four times with this graphics card off three seems to really smoothen the sim out for me and it, again it's finding that sort of sweet spot for your system so let's try that when you turn frame gen on and off by the way 
you're really meant to restart the sim to get the full benefit. But we'll just put it on there. Look at that, over a hundred. Don't particularly need that, but I can feel already. It feels a lot snappier and smoother. And that's exactly where I want it. And of course, looking down at New York looks absolutely fantastic. So here's a question. Should you use frame gen or... Let's just go back there. I can get away with this as well. FSR. If you're on AMD especially, AMD Cast FSR 3, you can actually use it on this PC as well. I prefer frame gen and NVIDIA D DLSS frame gen rather. And a multiplier of free for my system. Should you use them if they're available? I would say absolutely yes. Doesn't seem to make much of a visual difference to the sim. What it is is what it does, for those who don't know it, artificially uh, inserts frames into your PC. So you can see that I'm over a hundred frames. Previously I was what 40 to 50? If I was at frame gen times two let's just show you that those frames will go down because it's oh someone else flying there so it's basically it's almost like putting two times the frame so inserting a f an extra frame per second within uh, your sim in a in a, in essence so you can see now what are my frames like sorry i'm having to look up with head tracking so you're going to see my view look up about 80 frames roughly and like I said, you should really restart the sim, so if it starts to act a bit jittery... Uh, but as you can see, smoothness. Very few, now I don't want to say this, touch wood! <laughs> Very few stutters and goodness knows what. Uh, although there is a bit of jitter there. Again, restart your PC when you play with settings. I actually get a smoother performance for me at frame gen times 3. So let's just do that. Let's hope I'm not breaking the sim now. Again, restarts. Yeah, you can see just the smoothness. Very little screen tearing, if any, there as well for me. And it's just a fantastic performance in both the Spitfire here, GA aircraft, and even airliners. I was flying. I'll do it in a moment. I'll fly an A320 over New York just to show you the performance on there. So times three, it's inserting even more artificial frames. I don't think that's a bad thing in Flight Sim. Again, it doesn't seem to make any visual difference. And it can actually, depending on your system, smoothen out your experience. Frame generation, I feel, is a must. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. So that's what frame gen does. does. And it can really help. I've seen people running 5090s with frame gen times 3. Uh, just to smoothen out their systems and their flying airliners and goodness knows what. Uh, why not? If it's available to you, don't feel. Don't listen to other people. Oh, you're cheating. Or, you know, it's just... You're cheating the sim by doing that. Bollocks. <laughs> In my case, it's actually helping my whole performance. I don't need 100 plus frames. I'm not interested in that at all. 50 to 60 will do. It's the smoothness of it that I love. And it still looks fantastic. As frame gen, let's now move to DLSS. Okay, so let's touch upon DLSS. I've switched aircraft now. I mean the Grand Caravan. Trusty old Grand Caravan. Same settings I had before. As you can see, glass cockpit display. This will be important. Let's go to settings. By the way, if my voice crackles sometimes or it cuts out or jumps, that's more to do with some kind of issue recording with Flight Sim 2024. I'm using uh, GeForce Experience. And if it, the sim stutters, suddenly my words will cut out or jump. So I'll, hopefully <laughs> I'm having to record some parts a couple of times because of that. But if that happens, that's the reason. Let's talk about the DLSS anti-aliasing as you can see it's in TAAA so let's switch this to NVIDIA DLSS I'm using an NVIDIA card and we'll keep it on performance and just a second just see if I can remove the there we go so we can read this properly I'll, I'll hover over it DLSS 
read it there. Use this AI to produce higher resolution frames from lower resolution inputs. This feature requires a, yeah, there you go, RTX graphics card. AMD, if you're using AMD cards. Uh, upscaling algorithm that produces high quality frames from lower resolution inputs. So what it does, I believe, it will upscale. It will put your sim in a lower resolution and upscale it back into the resolution, in this case of 1440p. So it may put the sim, just for example, don't know the ins and outs on what resolutions exactly, but it may sort of downscale it to 1080p, then AI will upscale it back to 1440p to improve performance. And in some games, anti-aliasing, we'll leave it on performance there. Go back to the sim, see what difference it makes. Hopefully it won't stutter too much. Uh, debug. Cessna Golf Sierra, leaving my airspace. Frequency oh, I've not turned AI. You're going to have to put up with the ATC in this aircraft for some reason it's on. Has it made a massive difference? What, are we hitting 110 frames? Visually, I guess not. There is a bit of shimmering going on there, ev here or there. Frames seem to be... Now, if that was a stutter, that's what exactly what I was talking about. Frames... Oh... Sorry about the ATC. Shut up, ATC. I don't want to scream at you. I don't know. Visually, it doesn't look quite as sharp to me. And this is an issue. Let's get into the glass cockpit. Take a look at the glass screens. They don't look great. If I move... Let's just do that. Where's vertical speed in this aircraft? I keep forgetting. I've not flown it for a while. There it is. And let's just move our vertical speed down. Can you see the numbers, how they're blurry? See that? That's a good example. Shut up, ATC! <laughs> see how these numbers are blurry here? This is what DLSS does in Flight Sim, not so much other games. Generally, people tend, n tend not to use it. Uh, well, you see a lot of streamers will say, mm, DLSS is not, is not great. We're all hoping this will be fixed. Let's increase... Uh, altitude say to 1700 feet go to vertical speed and increase that Did you copy? yeah it will shut up ATC in a moment but as you can see these numbers are not great let's just take autopilot off for a second where's the autopilot it's there isn't it so I've just not flown this aircraft can you see how blurry these numbers are getting now and this is an issue with VR. Generally, a lot of us do use this because it just improves performance generally in VR. Uh, depending what settings you're using, I'm able to fly over New York and uh, London. Good. <laughs> I'm able to fly over London and New York in VR now with this graphics card, but I'm having to use DLSS to help me there. But generally, flying in pancake mode, flat screen mode, yeah, because of the way these this blurriness interacts, and just generally, it just doesn't look as good New York to me with that DLSS on. Let's turn it off and show you the difference. So generally, a lot of us don't use this. I'm not saying all of us, and if you do use it, let us know in the comments. I'll put it back to TAA, and we'll take a look at the difference. Can you see the sharpness and difference there? Already looking over at New York. Get in the cockpit and look at that clear dis dis uh, display with the numbers there. So yeah, definitely for me, I don't use that T uh, NVIDIA DLSS in that sense. I use frame gen, but not... Let's just go back. Settings. Hopefully I'm not going to break the sim. Actually, I've not had much problems since I've upgraded to the 1060 Ti, messing around with settings and goodness knows what famous last words. And to aliasing DLSS, I tend to leave at TAA, and a lot of us do for the reasons I just showed you there. If you use it, do let us know in the comments. And here you go. As promised, this is flying the A320 over New York. Not something you would ever do in real life, certainly not now. 
Uh, but there you are. That's with the settings I showed you before. DLS, DLSS frame gen times 3. And yeah, getting splendid results doing that. And it works well with my systems. Let me just speed up a wee bit there. Why is it not sticking to my speed? Auto throttle's not even turned on, that's why. Let's turn auto throttle on to help it out. That should do. Now it should be back into auto throttle mode. And let's just turn to our right there. So, that was a quick explanation and demonstration of DLSS and frame gen and how they affect your system and what they do. Do let us know in the comments, my friends, what you're using if you're on PC. If you're on Xbox, by the way, you are getting FSR. Don't know about Flight Sim uh, specifically for the Series X or S. Uh, if anybody knows there whether it is using FSR in something like 4K on the Series X, I'll be interested. It possibly is. Uh, just to insert artificial frames, that type of but certainly in other games. Now, if that was a judder, again, I do apologise. It's just an artefact of recording with GeForce Experience in Flight Sim 2024. There you go. Do let me know your thoughts below and let us know what you're using. Give this video a like if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe for more. And I'll see you soon.